Hello and welcome back. So we're going to look at calculation of osmotic pressure. So osmotic pressure is this pressure that we've got to apply here to prevent osmosis. So in the last video, we looked at the fact that if you've got pure solvent, like pure water on one side, and you've got an aqueous solution containing a solute on the other side, there will be a net osmotic flow from right to left. And the reason for that is that the water molecules are at a higher concentration here, so they will tend to move through the small holes in the semipermeable membrane and fill up the left-hand side and increase the water level. And of course the solute, although it's got a higher concentration on the left and it would like to diffuse over to the right, is prevented by the fact that the semipermeable membrane has just got holes that are way too small for it to move through. So we know that osmosis will occur to move and shift water from the right to the left. But if we apply this pressure here, which we call the osmotic pressure, we we can prevent that flow. We said earlier on, right, that this is a colligative property. So this is actually something that's dependent upon um, solute concentration. In fact, we're ready to write the equation now. The osmotic pressure is equal to the molar concentration times the ideal gas constant times the temperature. So let me just go ahead and define these terms. So this is the temperature in Kelvin. R is the ideal gas constant. And uh, it's kind of interesting that, you know, although we're not dealing with a gas here, we still have the ideal gas constant here. Some people call it the universal gas constant because it seems to crop up in lots of places in the universe. And this is the molar concentration of the solute. So this is basically the total molar concentration of anything dissolved in the solution. The ideal gas constant has uh, a value and uh, of course it has a value, but its value depends on the units you pick. And so if we pick atmosphere liters per mole Kelvin, then it's got a value of 0 0.08206 atmosphere liters over mole Kelvin. In fact, you can see the units uh, work out really well here because uh, if you multiply your temperature in Kelvin, it cancels that out. Your molar concentration is moles per liter, so liters over moles will cancel, and you're left with atmospheres at the end of the day. So the osmotic pressure calculation, if you use this gas constant, will give you an osmotic pressure in terms of atmospheres. So let's go ahead and take some tree sap, and tree sap, um, maybe we'll say it's at 22 degrees Celsius, and it's got a concentration of solutes in the sap that are something like 0.75 moles per liter, so 0.75 molar. We can use that to calculate the osmotic pressure, so pi, and we can just plug it into the equation. So pi is MRT, so the molar concentration of the solute in the tree sap is 0.75 molar. We can write that as moles per liter. The gas constant, 0 0.08206 atmosphere liter mole kelvin kind of running out of room here and the temperature is 22 degrees c well remember to convert to kelvin we essentially add 273.15 there's no decimal places there then we just end up with 295 kelvin so at the end of the day then we're multiplying by 295 kelvin and if you look at the units then the moles per liter cancel liters per mole the Kelvin cancels and we're left with atmospheres. So that's a pretty good unit for pressure. So uh, we multiply that out and I get 18 atmospheres. And so it takes 18 atmospheres of pressure in order to stop this osmosis. Now for water, it turns out that you need about 30 feet of water to, uh, to uh, create a pressure of about one atmosphere. So you can imagine that you would need uh, 18 Oh, let me see, 18 times 30, so you would need about 540 feet of water in order to apply that additional pressure to stop osmosis. So if you imagine your tree is 540 feet tall, it turns out at the very tippy top of the tree, the weight of all the water, right, we're just going to say tree sap is essentially water, which of course is terrible, it isn't, but the weight of the tree sap, right, would be just enough to stop the flow of osmosis. So uh, tree sap can go all the way to the tippy top of the tree, as long as your tree is uh, less than 540 feet in this example.